The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that by David, that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. so many of you here at 8 o'clock this morning that started off with just three more, more stuff, but I was thinking, man, that stewardship sermon must have really been good. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of good stuff. Um, today's gospel lesson, uh, Jesus talks about love. It says that the Pharisee comes, the lawyer, this is the person who, uh, for a living, would argue uh, the uh, Mosaic law, and he says they could come to put him to the test. They're trying to trap him, make him say something blasphemous. They say, which commandment is the greatest? Now right there, I think you can already see the trap. The commandments were all equal. Okay? And they're, the laws that come after that, there's 600 and something of them. So he's asking, of all this massive amount of commandments and laws, what's the greatest? Pick out one. Now we would expect Jesus to respond with some sort of riddle or parable or something that's pretty hard to understand because that's kind of what he normally does. But he doesn't. He answers simply and he answers in a very straightforward manner. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. This is the first and greatest command. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. He says, on these two commands hang all the law and the prophets. In other words, he's saying, if you can do these two things, everything else will take care of itself. You see, if you love God and you love your neighbor, then you couldn't possibly consider murder. You're not going to lie to them. You're not going to steal from them. And if you get into the, all the other Mosaic laws, you're not going to... Uh, steal their donkey, and you're not going to... You get the idea. <laughs> Jesus says, if you want the answer to any question in terms of what you are and aren't supposed to do, the answer is love. Love. This is what we are called to do. And there's no more important piece of Scripture that you're going to hear read in this church than the one you just heard. If you remember nothing else from all your Sundays here, I hope you remember this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. It's what we were made to do. We were created to love. And that's why nothing else fills that emptiness and that void in our lives. I don't know about you all, but I certainly have, and many people I've talked to have spent a lot of time and energy in my life looking for other things to fill that void. Trying to figure out how uh, possessions or uh, material wealth or, uh, or power or influence or other people's praise, how it might fill that emptiness. But the truth is, we were created to love, and nothing else 
will suffice. Now, love in this sense is not merely being nice. Sometimes we confuse those two things. Love is not simply nice. Love is something much greater than simply being nice to one another. Love is about being honest with one another, which is often difficult. It's about being patient. It's about being kind. Now Paul gives the best uh, kind of explanation of what love is in 1 Corinthians, and you're all familiar with that, that passage, and I don't know why they don't couple these, those readings together. They never have. But he talks about the definition of love. If we decide, okay, I'm created to love. That's what I'm called to do. That's what I need to do. What does it mean to love? And he gives us a long list of what love is and isn't. He says it's patient, it's kind, it's not full of pride, it's not jealous, it's not envious, it's not boastful. But he says that love is the most important thing. Now, oftentimes in church, uh, I think, and I'm, I'm guilty of this as well, we tend to send the message that faith is the most important thing. But it's not. Because faith is simply the means by which we come to know God. The point, the end result, is intended to be a loving relationship with God. And therefore, faith is not as important as love. Love is what we are made to do. I know I'm saying that over and over again, but it's the most important thing I have to say to you this morning. We are created to love one another. And nothing else, nothing else fills that void. One of the things that I've been, you know, people talk about when you have kids that, you know, I heard this all along that, that you know, you'll be, You'll love them so much and that it'll be so wonderful. And, uh, and I was interested when I had kids to see if that was true. <laughs> <laughs> For the most part. <laughs> it is true. But it was different than what, I, what, than what I thought. Because what I found was that what, was, what is amazing about loving my children is that it has to do with my love for them. That's the joyous part. In other words, it's not that they're so wonderful. Most of the time they're brats, right? <laughs> they're selfish. They're, they in no way represent what you might consider to be unconditional love or kindness. I mean, certainly they're, they're happy to see me sometimes and they express a joy that most grown-ups are too inhibited to express when they see me. <laughs> but ultimately what is truly fulfilling is my love for them it's my unconditional love for them that brings me joy it's not how they do or don't act it's not what they do or don't say it's the feeling that I get when I look at them it's unconditional love and that's what God's calling us to He's saying he, he wants us to move past this place where we're happy based on how happy other people are with us. Or we're happy based on how well others treat us or how wonderful they tell us we are or how much they love on us. He says true joy, true peace is found in loving. In loving. Not in being loved. This is why we're called to love God first. Because that sets the order for our whole lives. Being in relationship with God teaches us what it means to love unconditionally. Because it's really hard to do something you've never experienced yourself. It's really hard to love another if you've never been loved. It's really hard to forgive if you've never been forgiven. We love God 
first and foremost, because that orders our lives. And in response to that, we love our neighbors as ourselves. By doing that, by doing those things, not only do we fulfill our commandment, our call from God, but just as importantly, we find the things that God intends for our lives as well. We find what true joy is all about. We find what true peace is all about. We get to let go of all those things that hurt us. I'm a true believer that 99% of what we get angry about, what we get hurt about, is really about us. You made me angry ultimately because what you did didn't reflect well on me or it didn't express how much you're supposed to love me or what you're supposed to think about me. I think very little of what upsets us is really about the other person. <clears throat> because when we truly love someone and we find ourselves in that moment where we find true compassion in things, when others do things that are unhealthy, we don't feel anger, we feel compassion. We feel love. We want something better for their lives. But that's what God is calling us to. If we can learn to love completely, fully, then we can experience life at a whole different level. I mean, it sounds almost comical or silly, but what would it feel like if everywhere you went, whether it's to the store, to work, to church, if wherever you went, you were truly happy and joyous to see people. Everybody. But you didn't look at somebody and say, oh, God, I do not want to talk to them today. I don't want to deal with their nonsense. I don't want to be seen with them. Who knows what they might say? What if rather we were simply loving, happy, at peace, not needing to or wanting to look out for our own needs? Because we realize that protecting ourselves doesn't really amount to anything at the end. God wants us to love because God knows that's what we were created to do. And it's the only thing, it's the only thing that will ever truly fulfill us, that will truly bring us joy and peace, and that will allow us to be the people God's called us to be. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I give you thanks, first and foremost, for your loving kindness to us. ask that you would help us to learn, to understand, to seek that love in all that we do. Help us to love you with our whole heart, with our soul and mind, with everything that we have and everything that we are. Help us to love you. Also help us to love one another, to see in one another not a challenge, not an obstacle, but rather an opportunity to share your grace and to, to be the people that we're called to be. All this we ask in your son's holy name. Amen. Amen.